Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set up Super Fancy Brawl on Tabletopia. Um, you can just search for it on Tabletopia and you'll find the, the board game and then you'll be able to launch it over Hot Seat or online. Uh, it's a two player version and uh, it is an updated version so all the card art is there, all the extra characters if you have kickstarted this game. So uh, you'll notice you've got the uh, game arena here with two deployment areas, three statues, and three different colored areas. Okay, so we've got creation, manipulation, and destruction as the three cores. Uh, to be honest, when you start playing it, you tend to just call them blue, yellow, and red uh, for ease purposes, which are your three colors or cores of magic. So if we have a little look at one of these characters here, so let's just uh, have a look at Golda. Uh, so you double click to pick up a deck. So being a deck building, well not deck building game, but deck playing game, uh, it is important that you know how to use Tabletopia with decks. So double clicking will uh, pick up a deck. You click and drag off to drag off a card. So here you see you've got the, uh, the standee, which would account for the miniature. You've got their uh, character card with their defense and their health and when they do level up on the flip side things may change and then you have their ability while they are flipped. Then you've got their deck of cards, their six cards, two of each of the colours. I'm just going to place these out so you can see what we're talking about. So if you've uh, not played the game before uh, you've effectively got three different types of cards. The three different types of cards you can get, or different actions, are the skill card, which is the one with the cog. You've got the uh, attack option, which is the card here, with the kind of explosion. And then you've got the reaction, kind of like a defensive card, with a shield. So they are the three different types of, types of um, actions you can do using the cards. And then you can see you've got the different colors. So with the exception of this gray card here, gray background, the reaction card, all other five cards, you have to use Goldar for these. Okay, and you can see either by the picture, the art, you can see it's quite clearly it's Goldar, or by that little symbol inside the top left hand corner for all of the cards. So what do you do? So let's uh, zoom out, let's, let's grab uh, Goldar and let's put him onto the board and then, you'll, and then we can talk about some of these actions. So it's a hex based movement system and when you play a card, so for example, if you play this card here, what you would do on your turn, okay so now I'm going to play this card here, and what you would do is you follow it from top to bottom. So if you see a green foot, that's movement. So there could be one hex movement in any direction. Okay, so if he was here, you could basically go to any one of these hexes. Then they can have special abilities. Like this one has dash five, ignoring champions and traps, deal one to each enemy dash flu. So let's say for argument's sake, there was a couple more characters and they had placed them next to this for some reason or another. And what uh, Goldard can do, dash five is up to um, that value, so up to five spaces in a straight line. So as long as you're going in a straight line of hexes, so one, two, three, so you might go to there to control the enemy's deployment zone and therefore deal one unblockable damage. So this, this symbol here, the broken wound if you like, that means that it's one damage that they can't defend against, which means if they have if they have this defense symbol on their card, it go bypasses that, which is really important if you've got certain characters which have got a lot of uh, shield, a lot of defense. So Dugram, for example, has two shield, which is really quite strong, so it's really hard to attack him and do a lot of damage. Um, but unblockable damage is really, really key. And you also get that with pushes and pulls. So that would be that card, for example. What you would have to do is you would exhaust your blue core and you've used your blue magic for that particular turn. 
Um, an attack. Let's just say instead of that card, we use an attack. Uh, let's put him back to where he was. Oops, to where he was. So imagine he is here. First of all, you go from top to down. This is you don't have to move up to two. It's up to two. And again, it's in any direction. So you could do this. Okay. Now you can't quite get to uh, this space here to be able to do two damage to this, but that would be an optimal thing. So what you could have done is spent a core to just move one to start with and heal one, let's say, and then use this card to move the two to here. Uh, obviously I've not got trap hexes, but imagine there's some trap hexes here. Let's say we had, whoops, we had a, a, a little board a bit like this, just to, just to show you some of the techniques that you can use. So here we got the two traps, and what the beauty of this would be, this attack, is it targets these three hexes, so you can say these three hexes here, and you're going to attack each of those just for one damage, okay? But the Anchors Away, as this one's called, is not necessarily to do damage on the attack, it's for this push ability. So what would happen is uh, you would choose your first ca character to, to attack your first target, so let's say it's uh, Korvash over here, uh, then what you would do is the opponent would have an option to use their um, a reaction card. Now a reaction card is the only card that can be used on any character. Okay, so I know this is Goldar's reaction card, the defensive card, but you can actually use this on any of your three characters that you're going to have. So imagine you've got six cards for each character, three characters, you've got 18 cards in your deck, and you're going to be having five cards in your hand at any one time. So your opponent can have a choice to use their reaction card. If they don't, do one damage through. If they have any defense, um, just try and look, which uh, neither Corvash or Maurice does. Um, but if they did have defense, you'd take that away from the damage, the one damage, and it wouldn't actually uh, effect effectively damage them. But the push ability is the key thing here, because you're going to push them directly away from you by that value. Any hexes that they can't be pushed is unblockable damage. So if we were here from before, pushing Maurice away, he's uh, he's blocked by a statue, so it's going to stop him from being um, blocked. Uh, stop him from being able to move, so he takes one unblockable damage. So let's say he pushes this one into here, Corvash into there, that's two unblockable damage. Remember, through the defense, and... Um, this one is root, so this, this won't be the best one. This means it, it can't move for the rest of this turn. Um, so not, not a hugely damaging one, but it can go up to three unblockable damage, so you can see how strong that can be. Uh, you're also pushing them away from objectives uh, that you could be doing as well, which is really cool. So that's an attack. You look at, you move first, then you look at the target area and you attack all things. By the way, this uh, area of attack is for all characters, even friendly units, so just be aware of that. Then the amount of damage that it does, and then any after effects. You could get, uh, let's just see if Goldar's got any before effects. I don't know if he does. No, he doesn't. Uh, but but he's able, Goldar's really good because um, this one, for example, is a ranged attack that pulls them towards it. So really, really important for objective uh, play during this game. Now, it, what do I mean by objective play? Uh, how are you going to get the most victory points? You can take out a character. That gives you one victory point. As soon as someone gets to five victory points, they win the, the game immediately. But the crowd is the important thing in this game. Okay, so you're going to be looking... Oops. You're going to be looking at... at trying to meet these objectives. And as, they, as the crowd start to get excited about these objectives, they're going to be worth more victory points. Until they get bored and then they go less until they eventually leave and you can't do them anymore. So this is all about the yellow area, the creation area. So you control the area, it's going to be the first one, or have two or more uh, champions adjacent to the statue next to the yellow, which is this one here. So this, this, that move that i just done, for example, puts me in the yellow zone. I am the, I am the character in the yellow zone, so I do control it. The most amount of characters in that zone means that you control it. So now I am trying to compete for that objective. You only score objectives at the start of your turn, which basically allows 
your opponent to try and stop you from achieving those objectives. But I would say 90% of the time, uh, nine times out of 10, the way that people win is by concentrating on objectives and trying to stop opponents from hitting those objectives. Very, very key in this game. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's uh, say that we did choose Goldar as one of the characters. Now, just bit, bear in mind with um, Tabletopia, it's, if you're used to other ones, you hover over until it kind of goes to orangey color. And then once it gets to orangey color, you can let go and it put that card on the deck. So we might as well take Dark Green as he's there. Now, uh, Goldar is, is kind of like a utility player. He's, he's quite tanky. Dugger is a pure tank. So double click to grab the deck, put that on top. Grab the miniature, put it over there. Uh, let's just pretend that that's there and that's there. Obviously, that'll be shuffled up. Uh, let's say you've got your opponents too, which could be Maurice. Take his character card off. Oops. Okay, uh, and then we need one more each, so let's go for, as we've got quite tanky characters, that's Gawain. Gawain would kind of make sense as a... Um, as a rangy character. So therefore I've got my three. You would uh, normally uh, draft this, so if you check the, um, the rules, it will show you how to draft for either casual or tournament draft. Uh, certainly for your first game, I would suggest just purely choosing from the six core characters uh, just because they're a little bit more basic in terms of how they play and then you can advance up to the more advanced characters later on. Obviously I haven't done that for this. Uh, let's just say we have Darren or the other player other, other player has Darren. Uh, so now we've got our characters ready. We've chosen our characters. Let's try and make this a bit more central. Then what you would do is you'd flip this deck, shuffle it. So right click, bring up this wheel on Tabletopia. It's how you draw cards and it's how you shuffle. So give it a good shuffle. Make sure you, uh, I'll tell you what, that's. And then if you hold shift and press down a number, it'll save a camera. You can, oops, I don't know why I just did that. Hmm, okay. Normally uh, you can left click and drag yourself around um, the board. Let's just, uh, I'll tell you what, let's, this is really annoying, let's, whoop, there we go, so if I, double, whoops, better, so right click, shuffle, and um, shift two, let's have this as the second one. So now what you would do is you place your traps, so you, you would uh, flip a coin for priority, then uh, the person with priority will place two traps down, then the other player, your opponent will place two traps down, and these are trap hexes, there are six in the game, and they've got that little symbol on them, so you have, to, you, any point during the game you're always going to have four traps on the board. So when you trigger a trap, the player who triggered the trap, or the controlling one who controls that character, will immediately place a new trap token on an available trap hex. If there are none available, then just adjacent hex next to any of the other trap, next to any of the trap hexes. Okay, next you draw your five cards. So right click, go down to the bottom of the wheel and scroll around to five. And what you're really looking at, so let's say it's this player's turn first. What you're really looking for is what would be a good hand to start with. Now you want a mix of colors, obviously. That would be really, really key. As you can see, I've got Darren. And I've got a ton of Maurice. So it's pointless being the first player, it's pointless having one of these unless I'm gonna unless I know I'm gonna be doing a plan action, which is basically grabbing a card from your hand and placing it on top of your deck. Because at the end of your turn, once you've spent your three cores, what you'll do is you'll discard your hand and draw a new hand up, a new card, a five hand card. Okay? Five card hand, sorry. So uh, you need to kind of think ahead. So there's no point in me doing that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be doing planning because I want to kind of maybe do this if I can. Because I can. This is before you do this attack. You can dash too, which is really quite. Good. He's all about dashing. 
and also having people him himself bloodied or whatever it might be. So I'm going to get rid of that card. I don't need two red cards to be honest. Um, mm, that, that's quite nice, especially if we can set up um, um, uh, Gold, uh, not Gold, uh, Dugren on that and just ignore his defence. That'd be massive, obviously. Um, but I think we're going to concentrate on Maurice and just get him up in the fray. Uh, get into the yellow area and tr try and... No, well, maybe not. You know what? No, actually, I am going to get rid of that one. And um, once you've mulliganed, this is the mulligan stage, it's a loose mulligan, you draw back up to five first, so draw another two cards. Then you place these two cards into the deck. You don't have to flip them or anything, it just does it and give it a good shuffle. So this is my starting hand. Um, ah, that's a point. Uh, obviously, I'm only playing one player, so it's very hard to show. Uh, but what, what I could do now is just uh, if I go, if you right click on this, you can select all, and then I'm just going to place those cards down there. So imagine that's that player's hand. Then you do the exact same over here. Right click on the deck, scroll down to the bottom, go to the draw, or over to five, and let's see. Now, this is second player, so reactions are probably quite important. Teleport is amazing, especially for objective control. Um, that's really good as well. Oh, and pull, and push. Oof, a fantastic set of cards. You know what? I think we should keep the hand. I'm not going to worry about reaction, um, but we'll just keep the hand. After you've done that, you would then draw the reaction card, uh, the, the objective card. So this is when the objective cards will come out. So just as I've done here, you put two down. Okay, at the end of the second player's turn, uh, you advance the uh the crown cards, okay, the, the, these cards, the objective cards, and they just move one step to the right. No matter which position they were in originally, one step to the right. Remember, if they ever jump off the board, you can't score them, and this is the amount of victory points worth scoring. So the first one is always planning, so you can't score the first one, even if you accidentally manage to meet the objective criteria straight off the bat. Then the person with priority, which was actually this one here, uh, would now place their three characters. So let's say uh, yellow looks really quite important. So let's say they do that. Okay. Next, um, the uh, the other player places theirs. So Dugan wants to get well up there. Gold um, Yeah. Gold wants to get a good route with his attack, and Gawain's got the teleport anyway. So. She's already earmarked one of these spaces if she can get there with the jump. So once you've done that, you're set up, ready to go. You've placed the traps, the trap tokens. You've um, you've drawn your card, your hand of cards. You've uh, revealed the first two objectives, and you deployed your characters. Once you do that, you move over to the player one. So again, it's not this is player two. So let's. I'm only doing this because I've only got it on one player, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a bit harder to do. So if we go back over to this player here, these would be the cards. Uh, again, what you can do is if you select cards and bring them down, to, see how that glows purple? That will draw them into your hand. Holding down shift and left clicking and holding and dragging the box will basically select multiple items and now I've got my cards in my hand. And then you go about effectively playing the game. Uh, just remember, you go from top down, you, the green boot is up to that value, you don't have to draw. Uh, you don't have to do the abilities either, they're not um, compulsory, is what the word should be. Uh, and what's really important, which I haven't mentioned, is if you haven't got a card you want to play, or if you want to try something different, you've always got these standard actions as well. If you spend a blue core, you can either move one with a character and plan one. Remember, plan one is taking a card from your hand, placing it on top of your deck. Any card you want from your hand. Um, and you're moving any character, so just one in any direction. If you spend a yellow core, you can move any character one and heal that character one, which takes one damage, one of these wounds, off that character. Or you can spend a red core to move one and then choose an adjacent enemy and deal one unblockable damage to that enemy. Or, if you don't want to do any of those first three actions, you can just spend any core 
to move to, which is probably the more common use of standard actions, especially to try and hit those objectives. Okay, and basically you would play cards until you have used up all your cores, then you would uh, discard your hand, so let's say we played three cards, a red, I'm not going to do them, a uh, yellow and a blue, let's say, uh, people have moved, and let's say he's gone to there, and she's gone to there, let's say something like that, um, or maybe even like that. So they're trying to hit those objectives, plan, you know, set themselves up so they're hitting those objectives. Then, they've spent all their cores doing stuff like that. You would make a discard pile. I do not like this about Tabletopia, it's trying to make these decks. If you've ever played Tabletop Simulator, it's so easy. Uh, then you would, the best way to do this, right click, select all, grab, and then where your hand is, try and find the boot, and then you discard your hand. Draw back up to five, so right click, down to the bottom, over to five, and then flip your cores to the ready position. It is now player two's turn. They would do the same thing, moving, attacking, whatever they're doing. Uh, let's say that she jumps to there, he pulls him into there. I don't know. Let's say he, uh, Goldar pulls him, he gets rooted. If you ever trigger a trap, um, so let's say he's rooted to there, pull two. Let's say he's rooted to there. He's got pulled to there. Oh, sorry, he's rooted, so he had to stay, stay there. Then that player, Corvash's character's player, he grabs one off here, and you can either place it here or here. So you place it into an available trap hex. Then grab that token, put it back into the deck, and again, give that a shuffle. And then that will be ready. Um, uh, sorry, this is guys. In. So then let's say Dugan goes to there, and uh, for so somehow Goldar gets to there. Okay, so they finish theirs, they discard their hand, they draw back up to five, they refresh their cores, and then, because that's the end of the second player's turn, you advance the track. like so. Now have three champions adjacent to the same statue. So now what you can see is even though uh, this player here has now got three characters adjacent to the same statue, because it's not the start of their turn, they do not meet this objective. They couldn't score this one anyway. So now it's up to this player, player one, to stop them scoring these. Because at the moment, that player is not only scoring this objective, but is also securing this objective. It, it'd be very hard to stop them winning this objective. But they've also tied themselves up towards that one as well. So you can see that the battle's going to be over here because that's where all the objectives lie. So it's important to get things like, um, not that they have, uh, this is not a great team because uh, I just randomly chose them. I mean, Darien's good to try and pull and push, but you really want characters that can pull and push uh, characters off objectives. So, I mean, Dugrin, uh, not Dugrin, Goldar's superb at doing that. Okay, and then you just keep going until one player gets five victory points. Immediately, they win the game. You don't have to play the end of the round or anything like that. You immediately win the game. And remember, if you take out a character, so let's just say for argument's sake, um, Korvash uh, takes out Goldar, then that player that did the killing blow flips their card, which means leveling them up, and they now uh, take the advantage of that ability. Also, you'll see here, start with eight health, Corvash goes up to nine health, so sometimes they boost their stats. The player who uh, got taken out, if they are leveled up, they immediately get leveled down, and they, you take them over to here. Very easy to get in this game to get uh, characters back onto the fray. Uh, so for example, this one here, you can literally use any green uh, movement point to go to any one of these deployment hexes. So he could literally come to here and then finish off this card. So immediately start pulling this guy two into there, one unblockable damage and he's right next to him and doing one damage. Okay, so really easy to get characters back into the fray, which is such a good point about this game. Okay, other than that, uh, hopefully that makes sense in terms of setting up and kind of how to play. I know Sam Healy did a did a how to play video as well. So hopefully with with both of those videos, you'll uh, you'll kind of figure out how to how to play this game. I'll also look to um, to be playing uh, some games online. 
and uh, post them onto YouTube so you can kind of see how a game plays out as well. It, it's a really fun game to watch as well because it's relatively, once you know how to play the game, it's relatively fast paced. You still, you still got a bit of analysis paralysis where you're trying to figure out what your m most optimal move will be in terms of combos, uh, but it, it plays really quite quickly and it's just a fantastic game to observe as well. Okay, thanks very much guys.